Hey, can you find a water bottle for me? Something so simple. Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Monday, September 25th. This is an auspicious birthday, you might say. 60 years ago today, federal troops helped nine black children enter Little Rock Central High School and has become customary every 10 years. We've had a ceremony to, to mark that point. This was the 60th. Uh, the Little Rock Nine are now in their mid-70s. Eight of the nine were there. The ninth uh, is died several years ago. The former President Bill Clinton, the Governor Asa Hutchinson, Mayor Mark Stodel were on hand along with a number of other people to honor them for their heroism and their contributions. They were happy to receive the attention. They're not afraid to come back to Little Rock anymore. It was a dark and terrible experience for the nine at the time. They've taken their roles as, uh, as icons of the national civil rights movement with great grace. However, the city's effort to call this a, a remarker of progress was pushed back gently and sometimes not so gently by some of the speakers today. Minnie Jean Brown, tricky, irrepressible, said she's not stupid. She told me last night at a session at the Clinton Library and he said again in public today the same words. They know what's going on in Little Rock. They know the schools have been taken over by the white business establishment. They know the, the state is uh, harming the district by creation of ever more charter schools. Thelma Mother shed where a number member of the nine wasn't able to speak, but her grandson read her statement. She said she was concerned about the proliferation of charter schools. Terrence Roberts said he's not ready to call what we've seen progress. Progress is something that's measured over time and we have a ways to go. Ernest Green mentioned the Little Rock, the Arkansas Times cover story about the question mark on progress and said he phrased that pro progress is an ellipsis. Again, it's a it's a it's a progress. There are other gains to be made. There were oblique references to Donald Trump, oblique references to efforts to suppress uh, voting rights in America, oblique references to the current controversy in which black football players are being called out by people on the other side of the political spectrum for their protest about the police brutality against black people. So while it was a very polite, very happy, and mostly a joyous occasion, there were a number of references that said we still have a ways to go. Mark Stodel in his welcome said there's still steps we need to take. Sadly, nobody on the stage said anything about the Little Rock School situation. Johnny Key, who's in charge of the Little Rock School District now as the state education commissioner, was in the audience. Uh, no promises from him on giving the voters of Little Rock their school district back. Race is ever with us. You know, there was a, an interesting story on social media this weekend. A white supremacist in Arkansas arranged a meeting of some of his followers, a small group it must be said, at a coffee shop in Conway. The coffee shop was flooded on its Facebook page with vituperation and criticism, and people have said they'd never spend another dime there again. They've abjectly apologized and said they've fired the employee who set up that meeting. They don't believe in such a thing. It's become politically correct these days to talk about race in such terms. However, I'm sorry to say, the division over NFL players protesting by taking a knee at, at, during the national anthem at football games seems to have created a great divide. Donald Trump flamed, inflamed the situation with a speech in Alabama last week, and uh, of course, it's it's his remarks have been strongly supported by his supporters. Uh, they've tried to make it into somehow slam on the military, what it's not. But when Donald Trump called football players sons of bitches, it, it made a lot of them upset. They love their mamas, for one thing, and they didn't take kindly to have their mamas called bitches. And so I think we're going to see a lot more about that. You know, the uh, false patriots like to bring out the military on these things. They like to say that black people should protest in politer ways and not be disrespectful. Well, they've been saying black people should protest in politer ways since the 1860s, certainly in the 1960s. And we know that sometimes uncomfortable protests do get results. Certainly they've drawn attention to their cause with what's happened uh, in the last few days. Health care remains front and center in Washington. Republicans are still striving to make a health care bill they can pass in the Senate. Unbelievably, they've made it even worse. They've made it e even clear that it's going to harm people's coverage for pre-existing health conditions. They're going to give some bribes to some states that are sort of holdouts. Alaska, Kentucky, Arizona, Maine to try and bring some senators to their side. The, the nut of this is, is that it shows pretty clearly that this bill is harmful to states like Arkansas that expanded their Medicaid programs under Obamacare, despite what Asa Hutchinson says. The thought is this bill won't pass, but the protesters are out in force in Washington because it isn't over until it's over. It may never be over, in fact. Speaking of politics, interesting article in The Guardian today about a social science research that says Hillary Clinton may be on to something when she says that her narrow win among women voters in the 
presidential race, something that likely costs her the election because of an erosion of support, particularly among higher income white women, may indeed have something to do with husband's influence, and it's an economic matter. Women vote their economic interest even when they might have more liberal views on social issues and that they bought into what Donald Trump said about Hillary Clinton potentially being bad for their husband's jobs, and so perhaps they were influenced by husbands in their vote. Interesting point. News to come today, Mayor Joe Smith in North Little Rock is going to finally announce new plans for that big public plaza he wants to build in downtown North Little Rock, something like Sundance Square in Fort Worth. He hopes it'll become a big tourist draw for the city. We hope to have some details on that on the Arkansas blog later today. If you're going to be traveling out of Little Rock Airport, be known that uh, the Transportation Security Administration is toughening security requirements once again, you're going to have to pull your tablet or your computer out of your carry-on bag and have it screened separately at the airport unless you're among the lucky people that are, have pre-clearance to get on planes without quite so invasive a search. And uh, finally, this is one to watch. I'm not going to go too far into it because you don't want to overstate what you hear on social media. But sleuths on social media think they found an Arkansas connection and one of the people who beat up a black protester in Charlottesville, one of the neo-Nazi crowd. More on that to come as, as it develops. But they think they've run down a, a suspect here in central Arkansas. We do have neo-Nazis, as the little coffee shop meeting in Conway uh, illustrated, although I'm not saying any of those people were part of this Charlottesville demonstration. The world is changing. Are we making progress? I don't know, but we sure need to resist what's happening in Washington. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.